In the last video of this series I had some problems with magnetic interference warnings. It's obvious that those appear when there's a mismatch between the internal compass readings. A fixed offset is acceptable because it can be detected and compensated in a calibration. But since calibrations haven't helped, I suspect that there's a faulty compass somewhere. I'd like to access the sensor data directly to find out which one it is. But even after extensive googling, I didn't find out if and how that's possible. I even wrote an email to a software developer at 3DR, who replied immediately and helpfully. But even he didn't tell me about a certain possibility that is a real game changer in my opinion. I'm talking about Mission Planner compatibility, right out of the box. I knew they called this product open for development. And I suspected that you could clone a certain open source firmware from GitHub, install all the dependencies, compile it, flash it, and only then get this range of functionality for your quadcopter. But this is all included. You only have to download the software for your computer and connect it. That's very nice. Now I want one too. Anyway, I temporarily disabled the external compass to see if that helps with magnetic interferences. Yes, it does. The internal flight controller compasses should be sufficient for now, and once we are up and flying again, we can investigate if a replacement leg compass is in order. There seems to be at least one more problem though. The battery voltage is reported incorrectly. Here's my theory about how that came along. There's a so-called SM bus connecting at least the RGB LEDs, the smart bits of the smart batteries and the flight controller. The very first thing I repaired, these two scraped off traces, are a part of that SM bus. Now I could imagine that there was an event, like a short or a connection to a higher voltage, that caused the blast hole in the RGB LED microcontroller. And possibly a similar condition in the battery controller. So let's take a look inside the battery. It's a 4S lithium polymer pack. Nicely made, high energy density and a bit dangerous, especially in this condition. The microcontroller has no designation, so grabbing the firmware won't be as easy this time. The individual cells are theoretically flexible, but the airtight bags around them usually aren't. In fact, these were damaged severely and should be disposed of right away. Warms my heart. Chemically speaking, lithium iron and lithium polymer batteries are pretty much the same thing. Elastic pouches make the latter a lot lighter, which is the biggest difference. There's also very little metallic lithium in there, otherwise this reaction would be a lot more violent. Too bad. The heat is on. But back to the matter at hand. I didn't find anything repairable, but there are a couple of options. I can simulate a working 4-cell pack with 18650 cells and investigate further. I can also replace the lithium polymer pack and have a new enclosure 3D printed, because there's not much left of the one that was involved in the crash. But those are possibilities for the future, like the setup of a generic gimbal I've been thinking about. For now we can equip an undamaged battery and take care of the final problem before takeoff. One of the motors wasn't spinning, even though the PWM control signal was present. I immediately suspected the other Atmel microcontroller that hadn't been replaced yet. And sure enough, one of its outputs to a MOSFET was permanently high and it refused to talk to the programmer. As it had worked before, I wanted to copy over the firmware from another working one. But strangely, a lock bit had been set on the motor driver microcontrollers. That way, nothing can be downloaded. But no worries. They are just using the infamous Simon K brushless DC motor driver software anyway. So to program a new motor microcontroller, you can just download the repository, set up a couple of prerequisites like the AVR ASM compiler and AVR dude, execute make program solo and be grateful for open source. And that's it, we are finally ready for a maiden flight.
But this was just a repair video. Better flying footage will soon come from the owner. I'll link his YouTube channel in the description.